Good morning, DCN. Good morning. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Are you rejoicing today? Yes. If you are, say glory. Glory. One more time. Glory. glory. His presence is what we're about. It's all about Jesus. And by his spirit, we get to know him deeper and deeper. Amen. Please turn with me in your Bibles to Proverbs chapter 4. Proverbs chapter 4. We're going to be reading from verse 20. Proverbs chapter 4. It's very close to Psalms, and if you are using the Bibles that's provided for you, it's on page uh, 628, 628. Proverbs chapter 4, we'll be reading from verse 20 to 27. Let me read for us the word of God today. My son... Pay attention to what I say. Listen closely to my words. Do not let them out of your sight. Keep them within your heart. For they are life to those who find them and health to a man's whole body. Above all else, God your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Put away perversity from your mouth. Keep corrupt talk far from your lips. Let your eyes look straight ahead. Fix your gaze directly before you. Make level paths for your feet and take only ways that are firm. Do not swerve to the right or the left. Keep your foot from evil. Amen. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you in humility and in awe of who you are, the most holy and righteous God, who loves us dearly by giving us your son Jesus to die for our sins on the cross and by giving us new life by your resurrection. And today, we want to hear from you, God, from your word, from your truth, so that it may set us free, that we may guard our hearts, so that life will flow out from our lives to the uttermost ends of the earth. So Holy Spirit, we depend on you. We ask you to open our understanding, open our eyes, illuminate our hearts, to see the goodness of who you are. Thank you for your love and grace. Thank you for this opportunity to come together this morning in your presence. We love you, Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Today I want to focus on one portion of what we read, which is verse 20. Three. It reads, above all else, guard your heart, for it is the wellspring of life. Can you say with me, guard your heart? Guard your heart. To make it a bit more appealing for, our, uh, you know, for us, uh, the Lord has given me a little bit of inspiration to change the guard to Fort Knox. I'm sure you know what that is, but let's just say that together. Fort Knox, your heart. So I've been doing some research, and Fort Knox apparently is the United States Bullion Depository, where there's a lot of gold inside it. And apparently, no one has ever really been able to infiltrate it without an invitation. It's uh, the most secure place in the world, or one of them. So let me tell you a bit about my research, Fort Knox. Here we go. Inside the vault of Fort Knox, there's a lot of gold. Do you know how much gold? 
147.3 million ounces of gold. Okay, so in, in the US dollars terms, right, uh, it's approximately 180 billion dollars worth of gold. I don't know how many zeros that is. Maybe around 10 or so. A lot of zeros. So it's a lot of worth, value inside the vault. So apparently, as you see it on the screen, we, it, it's, it's a building, and it has the world's hardest shell. The walls are four foot thick, made out of granite and concrete and steel and fireproof material. The front door, as you see, the front door itself, it weighs how many tons? 22 tons. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't think... I can't even imagine, 22 tons. The safe inside this building is also very, very sturdy. It's 27 inches thick, and it's bomb-proof, but not just any bomb, it's atomic bomb-proofed. Even if you put an atomic bomb, it will not open up. And it has barriers. Not only this building, but you can see if you saw a map, it has parameters around it, and it's so safely protected. And it, it only, not only with the barriers, but it has a military base right next to it. So we have 30,000 foot soldiers ready to come at you if you were to infiltrate or try to get to the gold. And please don't try to do that, because it's illegal. No less to say you'll have 300 tanks chasing you, right? So why do they make this place so secure? Why do they protect this place so much? Anyone have an answer? Why do they protect this place? The value of what's inside. The value of the $180 billion worth of gold is valuable and worthy of protection. So we go to my first point today. You are worth more than $180 billion. I don't hear much of an amen. Let me try that again. You are worth more than $180 billion. Some of you might be saying, hold on, my bank account doesn't have any fraction of that money, so how could I be worth that much? No, no, it's not about your bank account. It's not about how, how many houses you have. It's not about the car you drive. It's, it's you, each individual, each person that has been created in the image of God. Amen? So let me... Uh, guide you to the original design of how we were made in Genesis chapter 1. Genesis is very easy to find. It's at the beginning of your Bibles. The first book of the Bible is Genesis. It means the beginnings. And in Genesis chapter 1, 26 to 31, we'll find out why we are worth more than $180 billion. Genesis chapter 1. Are we all there? Yes. All right. If you're there, say glory. glory. From verse 26, let me read for you. Then God said, Genesis 1, verse 26 onward. Then God said, let us make man in our image, in our likeness, and let them rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air, over the livestock, over all the earth, and over all the creatures that move along the ground. So God created man in his own image. Everyone say, I am created, I am created. In, God's image. in God's image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and increase. And indeed, we as a church body, we are increasing. We have lots of babies, and I encourage you to have more babies. Amen, Keith? Amen, Amen brother. That's right. <laughs> Fill the earth and subdue it. Rule over the fish of the sea and the birds of the air and over every living creature that moves on the ground. 
Then God said, I give you every seed-bearing plant on the face of the whole earth and every tree that has fruit with seed in it. They will be yours for food. Praise God for salad. And to all the beasts of the earth and all the birds of the air and all creation that move on the ground, everything that has breath of life in it, I give every green plant for food. And it was so. And God saw that all he had made And it was very good. In the original text of the Hebrew, very good comes out once in this creation story. Until now, God said it was good. It was good. It was good. It is good. But when he created man and female in his image, he said it was very good. In the original language, it's tov mu'od. It's, it's not just good. It's so good. When he sees you, he sees his creation in you. And he says it's very good. Some of us have a hard time accepting our worth and our value. Say, no, I'm just not educated enough. I'm not learned enough. I don't have enough money. I don't have enough experience. So God can't really love me. But he says, you, when he created you, the original design was that you are very good to him. Pleasing, desirable, worthy. That's the original design. Unfortunately, After a couple of chapters in Genesis chapter 3, we find the problem of sin coming into humanity. That's the problem we, you and I, we all struggle with. Because the very good image of God, we broke because of our choices, because of the inheritance that's been given to us, and by the evil that's been caused to us. And the problem is sin. Sin has broken our relationship to God and with God. There's been a chasm, and we cannot bridge the gap at all. No matter how hard you try to climb by being religious, by doing this, by doing good deeds, by saying good things, by having positive thoughts, by praying every day, it doesn't cut it. We cannot Cross that chasm. But God had a plan. And we'll talk more about that later on. So, the original design is that you are worth more than all of these dollars. And God wants to recover that today. You equal heart. Today I'm using some mathematics because I wasn't too good at it when I was in school, but I'm just trying to use it. So equal means what? It's the same. So you are your heart. You equal heart. Your heart. Everyone point to your heart. Okay. And Gloria, your heart is beating good, right? Amen. By God's grace. By God's grace, our hearts are beating It's the central place of our internal organs, actually. It pumps blood and it circulates and it helps us to to have energy and, and to live. But in Proverbs 4, 23, when God is teaching us, guard your heart, it not only encompasses the physical heart, There's a deeper meaning to it. The biblical meaning of of heart is the center of our affections, the center of our thinking, the center of our feeling, the center of our choices. So whatever's in our hearts, and Jesus says this, whatever's in your heart will come out with your words, with your actions, with your thoughts. Whatever's in your heart will come out. Now, what's in our heart is important, isn't it? See, if there was some toxic poison in our literal hearts and it was pumping that poison to all of our organs and all of our veins, we would soon find ourselves in a hospital because we need that poison to be taken out of us. Yes? Yes. Amen? Are we all awake this morning? 
Poison is bad, right? We can't let poison in our hearts and let that circulate. Likewise, the center of our affections, the center of our thinking, feeling, and our choices cannot be adulterated with bad things. Otherwise, we will have bad affections, bad thoughts, bad feelings, and make bad choices. Please don't pretend like we don't make bad choices. We all do. We all have. And we probably will. As a matter of fact, just down this road, if you go down for a mile... There's a place called Middleton Correctional Facilities, and we have 1,200 inmates that live there because of bad choices. Are we any different? One choice. See, every time Brendan and I go to minister to them, we are no different to them. They are wearing orange and, and gray. But if God did not help me to have self-control, I'd be making those choices over and over and over again. Amen. So it's only by God's grace we are here today. Amen? We could have been in so many other places because of our wrong choices. But he has preserved us and kept us to come to this place. So your heart is you. And in Matthew 12, 35, Jesus says these words. And I will, I will read for you. Matthew 12, 35. Jesus says this. The good man brings good things out of the good stored up in him. And the evil man brings evil things out of the evil stored up in him. Amen. Jesus teaches us, if there's good inside of us, good will come out. If there is evil inside of us, evil will come out. But then again, let's go back to the problem. The problem is sin. We have sin in our hearts. We have poison in our hearts. What do we do? Before we make our hearts protective, of the A-bombs and all of the things that will try to infiltrate, we need to have our hearts cleansed out first. Think of our houses, our homes. See, one of the things, you find me really weird at times because I find things fascinating that you probably think is just normal. Mondays, okay, guys, Mondays. You will see me on Mondays uh, watching out from uh, my living room toward where I put my trash barrels. And... And exactly at about from 11.30 to noon, these big trucks, <laughs> these trucks, they come, and these guys, they pick up my trash that I've put there, of course, recyclables as well. They put my trash into their truck, and they empty my garbage barrel. Amen, it is nice. I want to I wanna publicly thank the town of Danvers. You know, I, I really do. Because, hey, they are taking my garbage and making that available again. Follow me here. If I were to bring in my garbage into my home, and obviously, I mean, can we think of garbage for a second? I mean, do you... What does it smell like? Garbage. Okay, garbage. Oh, and I want to thank Waste Management for doing that. I mean, they, those guys are amazing. The, the, the smell, the stench, the stink. I thought really hard to think of the three S's. Right? The smell, the stink, and the stench. You bring that into your home. Well, how does that affect us when garbage is in our home? It begins to stink our home. And not only that, we're really uncomfortable with it, and then it's really unhygienic, and uh, we'll probably end up having some kind of disease if we let that garbage in our home. 
So the idea is we take the garbage out and I put it out on Mondays and I see this glorious sight of this big truck coming in and taking my garbage away so that my home is clean. So that we could live a healthy life without the stink, nor the stench, nor the smell of rotten things. I find it fascinating. For, for those who don't have your towns, you know, cleaning up your garbage for you, move, move to Danvers. Come to Danvers. Yeah, come to Danvers. It's a good place to live. We need to protect what's good in our hearts, and we need to let out the poison, the garbage, the rotten things that have presided, that we have let in. The problem of sin is that it's quite sticky. It'll stick to us because our memories will play tricks on us, and it will bring us back to those times when we made those awful choices. The devil has a good tactic of condemning us, saying, Hey, Elisha, didn't you do this? So how could you preach the pure word of God? How dare you preach holiness when you have made all these wrong decisions in your life? See, that's what the devil does to us. He condemns us. He'll point fingers at you and say, No, you're unworthy. You are less than. You are, you are a good for nothing. That's what the devil will say. But remember, you are worth more than $180 billion because you were created in God's image, and that's the original design. But again, the problem is sin, isn't it? How do we get rid of this sin? What can wash away my, your sin? And the wonderful hymn writer, and I have to sing this. What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole? What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Oh, precious, oh, precious is the flow that makes me white as snow. No other found I know. Nothing but the blood of Jesus. The answer lies in the blood of the Lamb that was slain. The, the answer of our problem, the sin problem, lies at the cross of Jesus Christ. Because you see, God is loving. And God is also a just God. So God's love, God's justice collides at the cross of Jesus Christ. So for my sin, for our sin, Jesus, the spotless, blameless, pure Lamb of God, died on the cross so that the chasm may be bridged. For those who believe in the Son of God, the Son of Man, there is life. In John 3.16, we know, For God so loved the world, He gave His one and only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's the answer to the sin problem. As we open our hearts to Jesus, his blood washes away the sin that was so sticky, that was so stinky, that had so much stench, that was so rotten. He gives us 
from a heart of stone to a heart of flesh. That's the transformative work of Jesus Christ, and that's God's grace. And not only that, his presence resides within our hearts by Holy Spirit. You are worth more than $180 billion. And what's in your heart is actually you. So the question is, what's in your heart today? The question is, how is your heart doing? The heart, not just the physical, but the center of our affections, the center of our thinking, our feeling, and our choices. What's in your heart this morning? You might be thinking, yep, um, well, I'm thinking about these things, and I'm thinking about those things, and I'm worried about these things, and I'm anxious about these things, and I'm, I'm just afraid of these things. I've got some bitterness in my heart. I've got some unforgiveness in my heart. And not to say, and not to say, I have some memories that are haunting me too. What about the pain that you've experienced in your life where people have betrayed you? What about the times when you receive word that one of your close family members has made a wrong choice because of sin and is going to prison? What happens when you receive the note from the doctor or the doctor says to you, you have cancer? How do we deal with it? Because life is full of these things that just seem to happen. And again, Not by God's intent, but because of the sin. What happens in your heart when you hear the news of an 18-year-old in Germany killing other teenagers, nine of them? And he lured them by saying, I'll buy you anything you want. Come to the mall or something. And then he began to just kill them. What happens in your heart? Can we love the killer? Can we mourn with those who've lost their loved ones? Absolutely. But can we love the one who inflicted the pain? See, that's what separates Jesus freaks and Jesus followers from anyone else. Because the world or any other religion will say, yeah, love people. Just love them. If they do good to you, love them. If they do bad to you, maybe kind of do bad to them. But, I mean, not in, a, not in a bad way, but just... But what I find fascinating about the teachings of Jesus is that he says, love those, love your enemies, and pray for them. Because that's what Jesus did on the cross. I mean, can you imagine being hung on the cross? And he says, forgive them, Father, for they do not know what they do. And if that's the model we have to follow as disciples of Jesus, how about you? Are you able to forgive that person who made that bad choice and that has inflicted pain upon you? Are you going to harbor bitterness? Because whatever's in your heart is you, is me. And today the answer lies in that, are you willing to let that go? Let it out of your Fort Knox, as it were. Because inside, God wants us to have the pure heart. For Jesus says in Matthew 5, Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Do you want to see God? Then today's the day that we make that decision to let go of the poison, let go of the sin, and let his blood, Jesus' blood, run over us and through us so that we may become the wellspring of life. You know, the, the other part of the verse that we're studying right now is, for it is the wellspring of life. See, people who've been transformed by the gospel, wherever they go, they are conduits of giving life opening a door, smiling, 
being courteous, saying hi. Seems like, oh, that's just good manners. No, because out of your heart, the mouth speaks. So even when people curse you and persecute you, you say, ah, Jesus loves you. <laughs> it's like Wally's testimony last week. He, he had this joyous laughter. Unexplainable. Joy. Life. And imagine if every single person in our church was filled with this life and was giving out in our schools, in our workplaces, in our colleges, in our workplaces, when we're driving, what would happen? They would be a revolution of God's goodness. There would be an outbreak of revival. Do you know just like a mile down the road, there are people who are living in transitional housing? It breaks my heart. And I'm so glad that we are reaching out somehow. We can't solve the problem by ourselves, but we are doing something. And that's what God is calling us to do, to be his hands, to be his feet. Let me just share with you a small testimony. It's, it's one of my brothers, and I really love him. And um, he, he was uh, moved by a conversation with one of the people that came from the transitional housing places. And uh, he's begun to help our transitional housing ministry by giving uh, food, bread and, and bagels. And every week we have people taking it to the hotels. And I, I learned this week that as soon as that food gets to the hotel, they're soon gone. Why? Because the conversation that this brother had was with a lady and she said, I have no food in my fridge and I am hungry. Mike asked the question, how can I be praying for you? Just one thing. I have no food in my fridge and I'm hungry. This is the 21st century. We're living in the United States of America. But do you see the need? Do you see the need for life? Life-giving opportunities? Do you see why we are holding Kids Fest free of charge? Because these needs are coming up. Life needs to wellspring out of us so that they may see Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith. And that's why we do this. That's why we love people. That's why we invite people to come and say, hey, the cross of Jesus Christ is where the love of God and the justice of God collide. And Jesus has taken on the sins of the world for you. And this is life. This is hope. We need more. Life to wellspring from our hearts. We need to fort knox our hearts against the evil that are trying to bombard us. Let me share with you one of the things that I've learned through this week. There are so many things that distract us, right? TV, media, um, music, life taking the kids to school and back, to the summer program and back, you know, feeding them. I mean, I, I see my wife feeding Leo. My goodness, I, I just don't know why she doesn't have six meals a day because it takes so much energy. See, we live in a world that is trying to distract us from what's really important because your hearts are more valuable but we make our hearts vulnerable at times, and I, I recognize this in my own life. I sometimes turn on the TV, and I, I like to, to watch comedies. I, I like humor. I believe God is the author of humor. But somehow, sometimes, 
in these programs, there are some off-color things that come up. And have you ever noticed that there's always false background laughter? Like, there's an off-color joke, and then there's, ha, 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 ha. Have you noticed that? And then somehow, when there's, ha, 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 I'm, I'm inclined to kind of laugh with them. But this is my encouragement and application for you today. Next time, by God's grace, you're watching something. And just let me give you an example, because we need a, a concrete thing to hold on to. Let, let's say you're watching a program, and, and then there's a song, and then it says, it all ended, it all started with a big bang, boom. What do I do? I say no, out loud. I say no. I believe it did not all began, be, begin with a big bang. I believe in my Bible that God created. In the beginning, God created. It didn't begin with a big bang. It began with God initiating creation. So that's why I make a stand and I say, no, I believe God created. Because once we begin to receive those things, sooner or later our hearts are filled up with information that is toxic. And that influences our thinking, our feeling, our choosing. So say no out loud. And if that doesn't help, switch off the TV and walk away. Retreat. Retreat. Brothers and sisters, you are worth more than all the gold put together in all the world. Your heart is you. And that's why we need to embrace that God loves you. He wants that original design to be restored. And he has given us the message of Jesus Christ so that we can be restored to that original design. So that you can give life to other people. That you begin to reach others and help them to know life. Help them to have hope. Yes, there are questions of life. Yes, there are things that we do not understand. But in those times, what do we do? As my brother Larry would say, it's not about the why. It's the who. And God is with you. God is with you through financial crisis, through the mourning of a loved one. God is with you through strains in our relationships, through difficulties in our health. God Emmanuel, God is with us. Hold on to the truth and fought knocks your heart so that the wellspring of life may overflow to many. In Jesus' name, let's pray. Lord, we embrace your word as truth. And we acknowledge that you have given us this directive so that we would live out our destiny to be transformed and to live out the original design of being very good in your sight. Not because of our doing, but because of your grace. Undeserving, yet you have given to us. So we thank you. And we honor you. And today we open our hearts to you. To let go of all the toxic things. Holy Spirit, minister to us in your beautiful way. And we will continue to honor you 